Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I want to spend a few minutes talking about the brand new Spark Remote and how it relates to the actual drone. I had a lot of questions from you guys over the last couple of days about how to set all this stuff up. A lot of confusion out there about whether I'm connecting up to the quad directly or I'm connecting to the remote, which then connects to the quad. So I thought I would just take a minute and explain the technology behind this and basically what's different about this compared to other quads you may have purchased in the past. So for starters, if you're a fan of the DJI products and you own a Mavic or you own a Phantom or an Inspire product, those were a little bit different because even though they use the Wi-Fi ISM band to make connection between the remote and the quad, there was typically some special sauce on top of that from DJI in the form of a proprietary connection topology. So if you own the Mavic, it's OcuSync riding on top of Wi-Fi. If you own the Phantom, if it's an early version of it, it was Lightbridge or Lightbridge 2 and some of the newer versions, which meant even though they were broadcasting over typically a 2.4 or 5.8 gigahertz band, that extra special sauce, whether it be OcuSync or Lightbridge, gave it a much more powerful connection and rock solid connection at distance. And that's why those quads could fly farther than any other quad on the planet today, 4.3 miles for the Mavic. So that, that's pretty astounding. The Spark is a different quad. The Spark is a pure Wi-Fi quad, which means inside the Spark and inside the remote, you have Wi-Fi transmitters and receivers that broadcast on both the 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz band, but there's no special sauce in there. It's pure Wi-Fi. And the honest answer is you're only connecting to either your tablet to the quad or your tablet to the remote. Those are the only two states it can be in. Now, the reason the remote gives you the extended distance is because the power this can broadcast on that ISM band is limited by the FCC. So most phones and tablets are down around maybe 10 or 12 or 15 dBm, which is the measurement of how much power it's got. The remote from DJI, this one for the Spark, is up around, I think in the five, I'll, I'll read it actually, in the 2.4 gigahertz band, it's 25 dBm. So it's double or almost triple in some cases. And in the 5.8 gigahertz, it's 27 dBm. So it's a very, very powerful transmitter, much more powerful than your phone or your tablet can be. So when you use that remote, you're gonna do a bind, if you will, between your tablet or your phone and the remote, and it's gonna bind to the quad. So you're gonna talk to the remote. You're not actually talking to the quad anymore when you're using the remote. And the advantage there is because of the powerful transmitters in that, it can extend that Wi-Fi range to about 1.2 miles, which is pretty incredible. Now, having said that, this is not very different than a lot of the quads on the market in the topology. So if you look at something like the Bebop 2, for example, that's a pure Wi-Fi quad as well, and there's a remote controller with that. It does exactly the same thing. You're gonna bind the remote with the quad, you're gonna connect your phone up to the remote, and the remote's gonna do the heavy lifting of transmitting all the information out to the quad about telemetry and direction, all the video streaming back, and it's gonna send that to your tablet. So your tablet has a, a fairly weak Wi-Fi connection to the remote, which then boosts that signal, and then transmits it out to the quad. So in a lot of ways, it's it's kind of like a Wi-Fi extender in your home if you've ever used one of those where this has a much higher output power, plus it's got directional antennas, which is gonna throw most of the signal downfield towards that quad. Now, in the case of the Bebop, I'm reading it again, the Bebop's a little less powerful. It's about 21 dBms, so um, it, it's not gonna fly quite as far as this particular quad will, but all of them kind of hit the wall at about a 1.2 mile range with Wi-Fi, because that's limited by the FCC where you can't broadcast beyond that. So that's the core technology behind it. So in very simple terms, it's a really easy process to go through. It's either bind it or it's not bind it. If it's not bind it, you're then talking from your tablet and your phone to the quad directly, and you've got that limited distance of about 100 meters. The minute you bind these two together, the quad disappears. You don't even know the quad's out there. You're binding or you're connecting, if you will, to the remote. Then the remote has that special relationship between it and the quad, and it does all the heavy lifting for you. So I'm gonna show you the procedure for binding these two together to marry them up. I'm gonna show you the procedure for unbinding them. So if you unbind them, you can fly with your phone or your tablet. The minute you bind them, you're flying with the remote and, and show you how to go through that. I'm also gonna show you the procedure to reset everything in the quad back to factory settings. Because sometimes if you get too far into it and you get confused, you can very quickly reset this to the factory settings and start from zero. And it's a very straightforward procedure. I know I'm making it more complicated than it is, but I wanted to give you the background behind the technology, then explain how you go through the procedure. So stay tuned for a second and I'll actually walk through the procedure. Then I'll be back at the end with a few more comments. Before I get too deep into the binding and unbinding procedure, I always like to know what the current relationship is between the remote control and the quad. So that way I have a good place to start. The easiest way to do that is to power up both devices, let them stabilize, then open up your phone or your tablet to your Wi-Fi settings page and see what networks are being broadcast. Now in this case, you'll see a Spark network and a Spark-RC network. 
What that means is the Spark is broadcasting its Wi-Fi SSID and the remote is broadcasting its Wi-Fi SSID. Now what that tells me pretty quickly is there is no relationship at present between the remote and the Spark, which means you can connect to the Spark directly. Once you do that, you're going to control the Spark from your phone or your tablet. So the remote's not even in the picture at that point. Now if you want the remote to control the Spark, you've got to actually bind those two together. Pretty simple procedure. What you're going to do is hold down the button for three seconds and you'll hear a single beep. Once you have that beep, hold these two buttons down and the bottom button over here. You'll notice the light will start blinking and it'll turn green. When it turns green, let go. It takes a couple of seconds. Once it stops, that remote is now bonded, if you will, or it's got a relationship established between it and the spark. Now if I refresh the Wi-Fi here really quickly, if I can get the button, you'll notice that the Spark network has disappeared and the only network you see is the RC network. And in my case, it's automatically connecting to that. So now my phone is talking to the remote, which is taking charge of what happens with the Spark. So you're flying with the remote. If you want to unlink the two, it's just as simple. But this time you're going to hold the button down for six seconds. So hold the button down. You'll hear the first beep. That's the binding beep. The second beep, you'll hear two. That's the unbinding beep. Once you do that, let me refresh the network again. You'll notice we've gone back to the original setup. So I've got the RC broadcasting and I've got the Spark broadcasting. Now in this case, you can't connect to the RC because it doesn't even know the Spark exists. You're going to connect directly to the Spark. And if I do that, I can now fly it from my tablet without the remote. Now if you get confused in any of this and you want to go back to the standard factory settings, that's just as simple. And it's really three beeps, so you're going to hold it down for nine seconds. So three seconds will give you the first beep. Three more seconds will give you the second beep. And then three more seconds will take you to the, there you go, three beeps. Now what that'll do, and I'll refresh it again, is that'll put it back in the original factory setup, which is going to separate the two as far as a relationship goes, and you'll have to go back through the binding procedure. Now the only time you'd want to do that is if you got a new Spark, or you wanted to fly somebody else's Spark with your controller, or maybe you didn't have a controller and you bought one and you want to bind it to the actual aircraft. So there's a couple of reasons you'd want to go back to factory settings, but this procedure should help you no matter what point you start at. And again, uh, it's a very simple procedure to do, but I know it can be confusing because it isn't very well explained. So hopefully that procedure is pretty straightforward. Now a couple other details I want to mention. The first time you connect up to either the controller or the quad directly, you're going to need a password. Now the password for the remote is on the back down here on the label. And if you connect up to the quad for the first time, you've got to pull the battery out. And the label underneath here has the password that you're going to need to connect up. Now you can save those passwords in your connection, so you won't need them again, but it's nice to know them for the first time, and then once you make that connection, it'll connect automatically in the future. The other thing is, if you connect up to the quad directly through your phone or your tablet, and you open up the DJI Go 4 application and go to the Wi-Fi section, you can actually rename your quad. So you can change what the SSID is that's being broadcast from your quad to something that's easier for you to recognize. You can also change the password. So if you do that, that'll just make it easier next time when you make the connection, and you'll know exactly that it's your quad you're connecting to. If you do the factory reset, obviously it's going to reset back to the original password and the original SSID. You can't change the uh, identification on the remote. That's hard-coded in there. So if you're trying to do that with a remote, it won't do it there, but it will do it on the quad. So that's pretty much all I had for today. I'm hoping you found this helpful. I hope I answered the questions that were out there. If there's something I've missed, please drop it in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. I will warn you that I've been out flying like a madman with this thing since it showed up. I think I've gone through 20 charged batteries at this point between yesterday and today. And I'll be out there as soon as I finish this clip flying again. So it may take me a little bit of time to get back to you, but I'll do my best. Um, I really enjoy putting these clips together and I hope they're providing value for you guys. I so appreciate the viewership we've got and your comments and your encouragement. It really makes me feel good that I'm doing something that you guys are enjoying and you're finding value in. So as long as you're watching them, I'll keep making them. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider subscribing because I've got a ton more stuff coming this week. A lot more stuff on the Spark. I've got a lot of other quads that have just arrived that I'm going to be reviewing. I've got a Dobby. I'm hoping to get a Hesper product from the Zero Tech guys pretty soon to compare that as well. So I want to give you just the broadest understanding of what's out there in the market today and how they compare to each other so you can make the best purchase decision possible. Having said that, I love this quad. And if you've flown it or you've got a friend who owns it, they're going to rave about it. So all the complaints that are out there about it not being 4K and it's a tiny little thing and it won't fly very far, 
Those disappear the minute you put this thing up in the air. I guarantee it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon. And as always, happy flying. Thank you.